Welcome back. We have officially reached day 5, the final day of a 5-day Gen AI intensive course with Google and Kaggle. Today, we are wrapping up with one of the most essential topics for deploying AI at scale, MLOps for Generative AI. We will be exploring best practices for bringing generative AI into production environments smoothly and effectively. Let's jump right into today's assignment. Our final unit is focused on MLOps for Generative AI. There is an optional podcast episode if you would like a quick summary, but the core of today's lesson includes reading the white paper. This paper goes into detail on adopting MLOps practices specifically for generative AI models, which is essential knowledge for anyone looking to move from development to deployment. While there is no dedicated code lab for today, we will be doing a code walkthrough and live demo using Google's end-to-end Gen AI App Starter Pack. This is a fantastic resource to get a head start on MLOps for generative AI by providing everything you need for a smooth transition into production. Be sure to go through the repository ahead of time to get familiar with the structure and features. By the end of this session, you will have a clear roadmap for making generative AI applications production ready. Today's white paper titled Operationalizing Generative AI on Vertex AI Using MLOps introduces us to the unique challenges and solutions in deploying generative AI systems. With the emergence of foundation models and generative AI, we now have a range of options for model architecture, tuning, data curation, and grounding outputs in real-world information. This white paper dives in to handle these elements effectively using MLOps practices. The paper begins by explaining the MLOps lifecycle for Gen AI systems, highlighting steps like discovering, developing, experimenting, tuning, and evaluating generative models. It goes on to describe the functional model paradigm and how to create a prompted model component at the core of an LLM system. As we move to the deployment phase, the white paper addresses essential aspects like version control, continuous integration, and delivery for Gen AI systems. It also covers infrastructure validation, model compression, and optimization techniques, which are critical for maintaining performance while deploying large models. Vertex AI's suite of tools and products is designed to meet the demands of Gen AI applications. This white paper explores each tool's role across the MLOps lifecycle. Discovery and prototyping with Vertex Model Garden, Vertex AI Studio, and notebooks, customization through Vertex AI training and tuning, orchestration and augmentation with tools like Vertex AI grounding, extensions, and retrieval augmented generation RAG, evaluation and monitoring using Vertex AI experiments, TensorBoard, and endpoints, and governance with Vertex AI feature store, model registry, and Dataplex. The white paper concludes with a look at Vertex AI as a comprehensive MLOps platform for generative AI. Its infrastructure combined with targeted tools makes it a powerful choice for anyone aiming to scale Gen AI applications in a production environment. Let us check out the bonus code of the day. We will be looking into some of the extra API features. So we have to start with the same installation of the SDK and also import the necessary generative AI libraries. Also set up the Google API key. So let us see how the image processing can be done using the Gemini. As you can see here, I'm using a Gemini 1.5 flash latest model and through which I'm passing a prompt to check about the image. So I'm giving the prompt as what is this? Please describe it in detail. So here you can see the description is given. Obviously, we know that the cake is a tiramisu cake, right? So we have got the description here as this is a slice of tiramisu on a white plate. It is layered with ladies fingers and so and so. Image understanding in the Gemini models can be quite powerful. In case if you want to know about it in detail, kindly check out the Gemini Google GitHub website. Now let's check how we are going to process the audio. 
So you can check out over here. I have obtained a sample speech from the data set over here. This speech is actually quite a large one. So I'm uh, truncating it to the 30 seconds. So once I execute this code, so you can check the speech is already downloaded. The President's State of the Union address to a joint session of the Congress from the rostrum of the House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., January 30th, 1961. So this is a sample speech. Now let us upload the entire speech for the processing. So you can see this code is used for uploading the entire speech. So once this is done, now I'm going to use a prompt that is who made the following speech? What were they positive about? So I use the model Gemini 1.5 flash latest. So you can check it over here. The response which I have received is that was John F. Kennedy delivering his State of the Union address on January 30, 1961. So you can see the positive notice. He is expressing the confidence to the American people and their willingness to face the problems. Now let's check how we can process the video files. So here I'm trying to upload a file through an API. So once I have downloaded it, here you can see I'm trying for the video to get processed. There are two prompts I'm giving here. So waiting for the video to be processed. And if it is successful, I will be receiving video processing complete. So you can check out the responses which I have received. So once the video processing is completed, again, I'm using the generative model Gemini 1.5 flash latest and I'm firing the prompt what characters are in this movie so you can see i have received the responses a uh, big buck bunny which is a main character a bird squirrel chinchilla and a second smaller squirrel so to check out whether the response which i have received through the model was right or not i just served through the movie's website so you can see the characters were exactly right as given by the model so far uh, we have been making transactional request with the gemini api so we send the request and receive a full response the api also supports response streaming for this, we have to give the attribute here stream equals to true. By default, it is false. So by if it is true, we will be generating the content in the streaming mode. So let's look into the context catching technique. This technique allows you to catch a part of a request such that it does not need to be reprocessed by the model each time you do it. So for caching, I have uh, created a cache over here. So caching dot catched content dot create so the model the instructions and also the transcript files so you can check the content is cached over here the information is displayed along with the time and the date so once it is done we can use it to generate a new model so i have tried to generate a new model through the cache data so the response object will contain the number of uh, tokens that were cached and otherwise used in the prompt and also in the next cell, you can check it out that we can calculate how many non cache tokens were used as input. So in case you want to delete the cache, so this is the code for deleting the cache. Though we are using a free tire API, still it is a good practice for you to clean up when you are done. That's all everyone. We have completed the bonus notebook where we get to know about the extra API features of the Gemini. And that brings us to the end of a five day Gen AI intensive course with Google and Kaggle. Today we dove into MLOps for generative AI, exploring how to bring generative models into production effectively and leverage Vertex AI for every stage of the MLOps lifecycle. From developing, tuning and evaluating models to deploying and monitoring them, we covered the essential steps needed to operationalize AI in real world settings. This week has been packed with insights from foundational LLM concepts, embeddings and generative AI agents to specialized domain specific models and finally MLOps. I hope each session provided you with new skills and inspiration to take your AI knowledge further. If you have any questions on today's topic or anything we have covered over the last five days, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. I would love to help you and discuss your experiences. And if you enjoyed this series, make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and turn on notifications so you won't miss future content. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this incredible AI journey. Let's keep learning and building together. This is just the beginning. Thank you.